this whole issue of passive ETFs um, is, is um, it's one, one of the things they sell themselves on is the fact that they're transparent. And what's going on um, in this lending activity is it's not transparent at all. Um, there is a potential for them to earn a lot of revenue from that sort of activity. Um, it's not quite clear how much um, the actual shareholders, the ETF shareholders, are getting of that revenue. Um, I, I have a, the revenue numbers. Um, they include uh, the, the dealer's fees, but um, it appears that the actual income is just a small fraction of what the potential revenue is. So uh, if it's anything, it's, it's sort of an, a, an investigation of transparency. As, as I've gotten older, I've become more and more interested in topics like market integrity, um, market transparency, um, and I've focused recently on exchange-traded products primarily. My observations are, are, are that it's growing at an exponential rate. Um, it is, um, one of the speakers this morning, Reno, was, was talking. Um, I, I, I think it is true that um, many ETFs are beginning, beginning to learn about uh, the potential of securities lending uh, in terms of their bottom line. And um, I think you're going to see more and more movement uh, towards that activity. And um, then there's a compounding effect because the projected growth in these products is enormous. As, as I mentioned, it, it, it's, the market's supposed to triple in size over the next five years. That's not a very long time. And so that's just going to escalate the amount of uh, lending activity that's going to go on. The, the, the current research that I've done is focuses on U.S. equities primarily, and um, that, that's uh, the toughest place to earn the revenue. Uh, where you could earn significantly more is in bonds, and as I mentioned to you, I'm just getting access to um, bond data. Uh, emerging markets are, are hard to borrow securities. Um, that would be another uh, great avenue to explore. And so um, that's the direction I'm heading. Um, different asset categories, not just U.S. equities. U.S. equities, um, if you consider the range of uh, the different asset categories, is probably um, the easiest to borrow of securities of, of, of the entire uh, array of those available. So um, I do hope to venture out into uh, um, bonds and emerging markets in particular. Um, yeah. But I don't think they'll affect things. I mean, the, the repurchase agreements, and so that would be the same price action for the lender, um, whether he has, a, or if he lends it out or he doesn't lend out. I mean, he's, he's going to get the same price appreciation and um, he's going to get the same, same dividend income stream. And um, I, I, I don't think that's a, a real source of risk, um, at least. Uh, uh, from my reading what, of what's out there. In terms of rates themselves, uh, they, they can be quite significant. Um, there are, um, I didn't belabor it, but if, there are instances where uh, the lending rate is 2,000%, which is an enormous number, um, but they tend to be highly illiquid f firms that are going through some major corporate event and um, but for a window of time, I, like the Facebook figure that I displayed, I mean, Facebook is a huge market cap uh, security, and yet its lending rate was 40%. That's a great opportunity uh, to take advantage of for, for an ETF. Um, the ETF, um, they're, they're buying and holding, and um, they don't care. <laughs> they're going to get the same price action as, as, as they should have gotten. And um, so picking up that additional source of income is, is, is something that seems low-hanging fruit to me. Yes, I, um, in fact, you're seeing that. And one of the things that uh, I didn't mention during my presentation is that we actually have come full circle. Um, the first ETF uh, to be traded was actually um, something called TIPS, um, Toronto, Stock Exchange Index Participations. Um, 
they were approved in 1989, four years before uh, SPY um, and the SEC approval. Um, the SEC was dragging its feet. Uh, these TIPS securities that were traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange actually had negative fees. And so um, it was uh, uh, quite extraordinary at, 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 at the time. Uh, it, there would be, um, generally speaking, no expense ratio, or in fact, there'd be a rebate um, because of, this, of the securities lending activity that was going on by the issuers. Thank you.